Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In the last video, we took take a look at the regression suite automation tool and just I just kind of gave you an overview and, and, and executed a test so you can kind of understand how it works, the different pieces that are needed, etc. So what we're going to take a look at today is we're going to create uh, some, some task recordings and a test suite just so you can kind of see the whole process after you get it set up. And the example of what we're going to use today is we're going to use a just a sales order create and then a sales order confirmation. I just want to have two test uh, cases in this example just so we can string two of them together. And we'll validate a couple of fields and then, like I said, we'll pass a variable between between the two uh, test cases. Now, obviously, normally you have a lot more than two, but just for this example today, um, I think that'll work for us. Okay. So where we're going to start off at is we're going to go into uh, – uh, Visual Studio or, or Azure DevOps, sorry. And then, so I've, I've already created a test plan for us. So if you remember last week, we were using uh, procurement, procurement and sourcing, and I created one here called for sales and marketing that we that we can add to. And then what I want to do is I'm going to add a test suite. So I'm going to go to new suite. And what you want to do for these is create a, a static suite is generally what I use. Um, so let's go to static suite. And let's call this one SO... Um, uh, create and confirm. Okay. Give it a, give it a name there. All right. So I won't add any test cases just yet. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to do my recordings and then I'm going to do my test cases. And I should have mentioned that in the outset too, I, I'm avoid using, um, the business process modeler and lifecycle services. That's that process is pretty well documented. So I'm not going to go through that. I think it's more valuable to show you the, the other way. Um, where we just use Azure DevOps and uh, the RSAT tool itself, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to flip over to um, Finance and Operations. And there's a couple of tricks when you're creating these test cases that uh, you want to do when you're doing these recordings, okay? So the first tip I'll give you is always start from the homepage. You always want to set starting point for these. Um, so just always start your cases from the, from the homepage. Just get in the habit of doing that. It's a good habit to get into anyway, but just... Just do it from the home page. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go up to the gear icon and then we're going to go to the task recorder. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a recording and we're just going to call this one uh, create sales order. All right. And then we'll go ahead and start that one. And then so the task recorder is uh, running. So basically at this point, anything that we do the task recorder is going to record our steps. Okay. So where we're going to go is we're going to go underneath uh, sales and marketing. So sales and marketing, and then we're going to go to all sales orders and let that screen load. And notice over here on the right hand side, that will record our step if you're not used to using the task recorder. And then, so we're going to create a new sales order. So we're going to go ahead and hit new. And the customer we're going to use is US-004. Now, this is the second tip I'll give you. It's good. It's actually good. You're going to see it complain here on the screen in a minute when I tab off of this field or hit enter on this field. Uh, it's going to say you should always use the drop down. But when you're doing task recordings, you should actually type in the values in the drop down, right? So what it will do is it will remember what number in the list that you picked. So if you pick number, the fifth item down the list, it's always going to pick the fifth item down, even though your other item may move up or down if you if other records are added to your drop down. So you really want to, when you're doing these, you want to type your values into any drop down. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and tab off of that field. I'm going to go ahead and put our warehouse as 24. And then at this point, remember, one of the things we want to do is we want to pass our sales order number from this test script to the next one, okay? So what we're gonna do, since we have this, the uh, sales order number here, we're gonna go and get that. So the way we do it is we're gonna right click on it, go down to task recorder, and then there, you have four options, copy, paste, validate, and add info step. The two that you're gonna mainly use are gonna be copy and validate. So the one we're gonna choose is copy. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna copy that, uh, sales order ID into a variable for us. Okay, we'll see that in just a minute when we, when we edit the parameter files, but that's basically what we're doing. We're going to copy, when this test script runs, we're going to copy that sales order ID so we have it. All right, so we're going to go ahead and say okay. And then we'll go and create our sales order. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add an item here for us. I'm going to do A0001 and add that item for us. And let it. So you, what you want to do before it... Um, before you do anything else is to make sure that item 
uh, populates. My system's a little slow right here, but um, it should populate here in just a second. So there it's populated. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the save button just to make sure that that, I've, that, that line has actually been saved before I do, do anything else with it. And then the next step, what we're gonna do is we're actually going to validate two, two items. We're gonna validate the quantity as one and we're gonna validate the extended price. The way we validate values is you're just gonna right click on the, on the field that you wanna validate, go down to task recorder, and then you're gonna validate. And then generally you're gonna validate the current value. So I'm gonna select current value, it's gonna validate that one. And then if I slide over, the next thing we wanna validate is the net amount here. So we're gonna right click on that, task recorder, validate current value. And so we're just going to validate those two fields. Now you really validate any fields you want to, but but generally when you're creating these task records, you want to kind of plan ahead and decide, you know, what what variables do I need to copy? So what variables do I need to pass down the line? And then what fields do I want to validate? So what will happen is when these execute, any of these fields that we're validating, if they don't match, um, it'll actually fail the test. Okay. So I think that's good for that recording. We're going to click up here and we'll go ahead and stop it. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and copy the sales order value because I'm going to need that in just a minute. And then what we do want to do is since we're doing these directly into Azure DevOps, what we're going to do is we're going to save these as a developer recording. So I'm going to go ahead and hit save as developer recording. And we'll see it saved down here. So what we're going to do next is we're going to go ahead and do our confirmation. So the next thing we're going to do is a sales order confirmation. So I'm going to go back to my main menu. So again, you always want to start from the main menu. And then um, what we're going to do is we're going to create a new recording and we're going to say sales order confirmation. And we'll go ahead and start that one. All right, so let's go ahead and we're going to go down into sales and marketing. We're going to go back to all sales orders. Now here's the, the third really important tip here is you always want to filter any list that you're picking an item from. So just like the drop downs, if you choose the fifth item down, it's always going to remember that and always choose the fifth item down. So whenever you're presented with a list that can be filtered, go ahead and filter it. So it's the, so what the record that you want is the very top record. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to click in the filter box. I'm going to paste in that value and filter on the sales order. And then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and confirm this. We could open this up if we wanted to, but, um, Let's go ahead and we'll go ahead and, and generate a confirmation for that. So we'll click the confirmation and we'll go ahead and say, okay. And we'll say, okay again. Okay. So there we have our confirmation done and we're ready to go. So we're ready to go. We'll go ahead and stop this one here, but we'll stop it. And then again, we're going to save this as a developer recording and we have our sales order confirmation. So now we've done our recording. So what we need to do now is we're going to go into Azure DevOps. And we're going to create our two test cases and upload our, our test our recordings against those. So I'm going to go ahead and come down here. I'm going to just show these up in the folder. So I have my folder open with my, with my two items here. And it's really important that when we create our test cases in here, if we're doing them directly in Azure DevOps, we want the title of our test case to be the same as our uh, our recording. Okay. So let me go ahead. So what you want to do is I just copy the recording name and we'll paste that in there and then we're going to go over to the uh the paper clip and then we'll copy that in there so so create sales order one upload that and we'll save and close it now one thing you can do if you don't want for whatever reason if you don't want the recording to be the same name as the um as the test script name you can name the recording attachment as recording so it'll say recording.xml that will work as well okay so we'll go ahead and do the next one here. And uh, again, we're gonna do the same thing we did on the last one. We're gonna do the sales order confirmation. Just gonna copy that value, go up here, paste that in there, go to our paper clip. And we're gonna go ahead and we'll copy that in there. Okay, and then we'll save and close. All right, so it's really important. Let me just change the order of that for a second. So. The, this is the order, whatever, however these are in here is the order that, that it's going to execute these test cases in. So you want to make sure they're in the correct order. So for example, if we look at this, we can't do a confirmation before we create the sales order. So you just want to left click and drag and, and make sure that the list here is in the correct order. All right. 
So that's all we really have to do in uh, DevOps. So we can flip back over to our regression suite tool. And what we want to do is we're going to go ahead and hit load. And what that's going to do is it's going to pull down our, our test scripts or test cases, anything that we've, we've created here. Let's go ahead and expand that. Here we have our create and confirm suite. And then we have our, our two uh, test cases here. So the first thing you want to do is we need to generate our run and parameter files. So notice there's no parameter file listed here. So I'm just select it all. And then we're just going to click the new button. And as it's generating them, you'll see that an Excel spreadsheet will get populated over here. And we'll, I'll show you what we're going to do with those. Okay. So we have our Excel spreadsheets there. And I'm going to check this one. We'll take a look at this one first. So these are the parameter files. If you ever hear me refer to parameter files, it's just these spreadsheets. And we can hit the little Excel button here. And we can open this up. So the first thing I'll point out is on the create sales order, we have a variable here for the sales order ID that we created. So all your variables here are going to be on this general tab of the parameters file. Okay, so we'll come back here in a minute. I'll copy that. The next tab over is message validation. So if you've got a, um, if it, if when you're executing a, a process in Dynamics and it, it pops up an info log, you can copy that message and then paste it here in the message field and it'll validate against that message to make sure you've, you've got it, right? Or make sure that you actually receive that message when the test is running, okay? And then if we come over to test step, test case steps, this will list out each of the steps that was taken and the validation, just basically what task recorder was showing on the screen. And this is a big improvement over uh, RSAT version 1.0. This is new in RSAT version 2.0. So if you've looked at the old version of RSAT, uh, take a look at this. Uh, it's a lot better as far as the you know readability of these things. So if we look here, we have values that we entered. You know, we entered in the customer, the warehouse, item number, and then these are the quantities that we're validating here. So we can actually change these values. So if like if we wanted to test for an A triple O two, we could do that. Um, but these values can be changed. You can use a. I'm going to show you how to use a variable in the next step. So if for example you have a previous test case that's creating a customer, you can pass that as a variable into this into this test case to use that new customer number. Um, but for this case right here, the only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this sales order ID. So this is our variable that's going to hold our sales order. I'll copy that and then I'll close that sheet. Uh, really didn't make any changes there, so I have to really save it. So let's go ahead and take a look at the next one here. So this is the confirmation. So if you remember on this one, you know, we have the same same tabs, general message validation and test case steps. Click over to test case steps. This is where we're entering in the sales order ID. Remember, we filtered down that list and we filtered it down to this ID. So we don't want this 3812 anymore. We actually want our, our variable from our previous step previous case. So we're going to paste that in there and that's going to uh, put in the new sales order value. Okay. We'll go ahead and save that and we'll close it. So at this point, we're actually, we're ready to execute our files. So let's go ahead and we'll, we'll select them and then we'll go ahead and hit run. And I, in the last video, I, I showed you how the, these would, these would run and showed you an example. So this is just going to start kicking off um, dynamics. We'll have screens pop open here and the dynamics uh, screens will load. So we'll just let those load. I'll speed this up um, and, and let this fly through here real quick for us here in the video, um, but I'll come back when they're actually done. So we're back, both for test cases ran. You see our results are positive here, so they both passed. Um, so as last time, I, I showed you how you can go, if we're, if we're back underneath the test plans, we can go and look at the execute and see that, that these things passed and, and we're good to go, so they passed. Now the last thing you wanna do is you wanna go ahead and then just upload, upload the files. So just gonna go ahead and upload them. And that's gonna upload your execution files to um, Azure DevOps. 
So that way you can pull them down for later. Like if you're running these on another PC or whatever, you can pull pull down these files and, and you won't lose your values, your parameter files that you've just changed. Okay. So what we've talked about today is, is how we can create our, our different uh, task recordings, link those task recordings together, do validations within them, and then have those run automatically in the regression suite automation tool. Okay. So I hope you found some value in this. If you did, please like it, give it a thumbs up. So this helps me on the distribution of these videos, helps more people see them. And then I upload a video about once a week. Um, so if you like this content, feel free to subscribe, hit the notification bell. That way you get notified when I upload a new video. Okay. So again, hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. See you later. Bye.